Hello, my friend. This is Clyde. Now do it this way. Today, let us talk about you, the Christian that you are. I'm not interested in how long you have been a Christian, and I'm not quite interested in which church you attend weekly. And don't worry, I am not going to ask you to tell me how many ministry activities you are involved in. We are going to get to the heart of the matter. Are you witnessing miracles in your life? Do you find yourself missing out on all the big things that God is doing in some places and in some people's lives? And you ask, what about me? I'm a Christian too. So what am I doing wrong? We could spend all day trying to list all that you might be doing wrong, but let us not waste your time. Today, we are going to talk about the way, the way to experience God doing great things for you, in you, through you. Are you ready? You know the story about Jesus and the start of his ministry. He had just got baptized by his cousin, John the Baptist, in the River Jordan. But watch this. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After four, fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Matthew 4, verses 1 and 2. I'm going somewhere with this. Notice that after that period of temptation and prayer and fasting was over, Jesus emerged on the scene and launched his extraordinary ministry season. Let us follow him and see what happened on other occasions. Come with me over to Matthew 14, the story of Jesus walking on the water. There is more to it than him walking on water. Jesus had just finished feeding a huge crowd of people, 5,000 men alone, with five loaves and two fish. And when they were done cleaning up, Jesus told the disciples to take a boat ride across the Sea of Galilee and he would join them later. But you must hear this. After Jesus had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Matthew 14, 23 and 24. That night, Jesus helped the guys in the boat that was being tossed about by the angry waves. What did he do? Remember, he had just spent some time by himself praying, and so now he wanted not only to join the guys, but to help them because they were in trouble in a boat being bounced around by the raging waves. Jesus walked on the water to them. <laughs> Don't miss it. The Jesus who had just spent time in prayer came walking on on the water to get to the boat that was being bounced around by the waves. You know how Peter asked him to join him on walking on water, and then he and Peter entered the boat. And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Coincidence? <laughs> Who walks on water? The Jesus who had just spent some time in prayer by himself. But it gets more exciting. They eventually landed at Genesaret and people brought all their sick to him and begged him to let the sick just touch the edge of his cloak. And the Bible said all who touched it were healed. This is the same Jesus who last night, while he was alone, spent time in prayer. Coincidence? You be the judge. Let me share with you one more story about Jesus. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him, and when they found him, they exclaimed, Everybody is looking for you. Jesus replied, Let us go somewhere else to the nearby villages, so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. What happened here? He had got up early one morning, went to some place where there was nobody else but him, and spent time in prayer. 
Then when the guys found him, he suggested to them that they go someplace else. Why? He wanted to preach in different places. They did, and he had a good run. He preached in their synagogues, more than one synagogue, and drove out demons with an S. What's the point? He spent time in a solitary place in prayer. Then later he went to some different places preaching in different houses of worship and drove out many demons. Coincidence? <laughs> one last one, please. Jesus and the top three disciples went up to a mountain and had a supernatural experience that we now know as the Transfiguration. When they rejoined the group, Jesus came upon a situation. The disciples were embroiled in arguing with a crowd of people and Jesus asked them, what are you arguing with them about? It was then that one man stepped forward and told Jesus a sad tale. He had a son who was possessed by a spirit and obviously this man knew of Jesus' power, but when he turned up with his son, only nine of Jesus' disciples were there. So the man asked them, out of their association with Jesus, to heal his son, but nothing happened. So imagine his relief when Jesus turned up. He told Jesus everything how the Spirit would make the sin, Son do horrific and life-threatening things. Jesus rebuked the impure spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. The Spirit was mad and threw the boy on the ground motionless. Was he dead? Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet and he stood up. But this is what I want to say to you. Listen, after Jesus had gone indoors, his disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, this kind can come out only by prayer and fasting. Mark 9 verses 14 to 29. I believe you get the point. I know you've got the point. You can experience great things in your life, but you have got to do the groundwork. You have to do things differently. Not by your skills, not by your intellect, not about the years of you being a Christian or the church you attend. No, none of those things. Those great things that you would like to see happening in your life and in your ministry, Jesus said those things come by prayer and fasting. You get the point. Now do things the right way, the Jesus way. Let's engage in prayer and fasting.